present my perspective on the, you know, the current situation. Here's here's kind of my uh, guidelines, my parameters. I'm going to talk about the city, my city, and my state, and. If we can squeeze this, con you know, this conversation uh, in, in between the way I see, the way I view the city and the state, it'll it'll avoid us from getting into geopolitical conversation, which I don't want to do. I don't, I don't. It's not necessary. So here's the thing, people. This is what I thought last night. Because here's the thing. Uh, Friday, you know, we had kind of had a chance to address it when it was first starting to get worked up, and and it was like, um, I didn't. You should take your time expressing your thoughts. This is this is a step one, I think, to everybody. You should take your time expressing your thoughts. This is why I'm always talking about context. This is why I always give you know other shows a hard time who take who take quick clips and then change narratives. I, I've never been a fan of that. You can check my background. I need context. I need slow, thought out, you know, conversation. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to talk about this, the protesting uh, and, and my opinions on it from, or a lot of people like me and, and their opinions. The, okay, here's the thing. Over the last, I'll get right into it. Over the last three months, you know, let's just call it the COVID era, right? The COVID era starts, everybody has different opinions, right? But here's the thing. I admittedly was a protect, you know, listen, I want to leave my child a good economy. I, I've explained this. I grew up as a military brat. When you grew up on a military base, all the commercials you get are about sacrifice for the nation right like in my world you, you you throw yourself on a grenade to save the platoon we we were, we were taught that my dad my dad said listen if i don't come back you know i'm i'm going out you know i'm going out fighting you know for my country we understood that so to me sacrifice for the 95 percent was a normal thing now here's the thing COVID era hits, right? And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, listen, if COVID's only taking, you know, if, if COVID's only hurting, you know, 2% or, or, you know, getting, you know, 3% of the people sick, I'm, I'm thinking, listen, the economy's important. I'm from, a gen, I'm from a generation of sacrifice for the team. You can't let the economy crash. You know what I'm saying? It sucks for the 3%. You know what I'm saying? But to keep America strong economically, you know, this I like this is really this is my thinking. This is my rationale. This is this, you know, if you if you think that makes me a bad person, then you're not being empathetic, okay? So I think a lot of people thought like me, right? Originally. And then, you know, more people started getting sick. And then you started to hear more people saying, listen. I, I, all, my, all I have is my grandma. All I have is my quote unquote uh, at risk family, right? And then Marcus Maven, the sacrifice guy, the economist guy, you know what he started to do? He started to gain empathy. You know what? Maybe, maybe the mask isn't such a bad thing. You know what? Maybe staying at home isn't such a bad thing. And people yelled at me and they said, you know what? Screw the economy, you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm not sacrificing the economy for my, you know, for my great grandma, or I'm not sacrificing the economy for my, you know, asthmatic, you know, whoever, right? And you know what? I I start to say, you know what? You're right. Even though the masses are not at risk, everybody mattered, right? And it grew on me. It, it grew on me to the point where I said, you know what? I've I've just been taking my my um my experiences my personalities and I've been putting it on everybody else. So here's the thing in Kentucky and Louisville, you know what we learned? We learned people matter. Lives matter. And Kentucky did the best job in saying 
we are going to restrict our movement because the 3% mattered. And we witnessed it and we learned it. And we as a state started to see empathy for one another, right? And African Americans were right in that boat too, where they just thought, you know what? We all care about each other and there was a pride there. Fast forward. I don't have to go over, you know, uh, uh, the Breonna uh, incident, right? I don't have to go over the George Floyd incident. You saw what we saw, right? And in this community, I saw African Americans say, what happened to that empathy that everybody mattered? I just went through two, through two or three months of, of watching with my own two eyes across the city and across the state, everybody saying everybody matters. And we're willing to shut down the economy because everybody matters. We're willing to deal with closing jobs. People are losing their, their lifelong investments in businesses. They're losing it all. And we saw people stick together and say, you know what? We can rebuild, but I can't get my grandma back. I can't get my family member back. And you know what we all said? We all agreed. That's what's going on right now. That's the frustration right now. Because the moment you said, hey, I need that same energy about, you know, uh, during this protest. I need you to help me bring some people to justice. I need you to help me reform some of these things, right? And and, and that's what you're, you, you people are started begging for. So, in that eye, in that vision, when I see you say, jump straight over the system, straight over the search for justice, and say, looting. When you start talking about looting, you know what you're talking about? The economy. I just watched you for the last three months say, the economy is not what's important. The individual life is what's important. So when you say the looting, when you tell me the looting is what's destroying America because the economy must remain strong, it's, it's a hypocritical energy. And I think that's what's, being, uh, what's, what's divisive in our, in our community, in our city, in our state. And, and, and that's what I think the energy is. But here's the thing. I, I will still circle it back around to... I've seen people have empathy for each other. I've seen people say the economy is not important as the human life. I just watched it for three months straight, and it changed me. It changed my opinion through empathy. Even though, listen, I have, I have a son whose career is at risk, you know what I'm saying? A, a, a very lucrative career. <laughs> that he worked all his life for. Listen, I I watched him, you know, listen, these stock markets, and I've watched all this stuff. This is me from being an economy guy to going to, you know, being an empathetic guy for the, for the human element. I changed. I know people are capable. So here's what I thought. I said, at the end of that, uh, in the end of that thought process, I said, you know what? You're only disappointed in the kids that know better. Everybody knows that. You know, listen, if, if you were, the, if you were the, the troublemaker from day one and your parents, listen, your sibling got mad because you got, you, you got away with whatever you want, wanted to. And you know what? Your parents didn't get mad because they knew you didn't know no better. Right? But, but, but your older brother or something, like he knew better. So that's why he got in more trouble. Parents are disappointed in the people that know better. So here's the thing. My disappointment is in the people that I know know better. All the all the friends I have, all the um, all the friends, all the associates, all the interaction, the social media. I I saw it with my own two eyes. You cared about the individual. So when you stop caring about the individual and you go to to commerce now, when you go to economy now, then I know you know better and you chose to do wrong. So when I'm disappointed in you, when I stop listening to you, when I can't have a conversation with you, it's because 
I'm disappointed that you knew better and you chose to take a, a, a different route. I, I saw it. I saw it. And, and again, that's how I generally felt and feel now. And I think a lot of people feel that way. But again, 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 you circle it back around. I've seen the compassion and I know it's possible. So I don't have to be, you know, I don't kick, you know, kick, kick my kid out. I don't, I don't say this kid can't change. I don't, I don't say anything's permanent. I just say, I've, I've, I've witnessed, I've witnessed it. I know you're capable of it. And, um, I know you're capable of doing right. And I just, I, I hope that doing right wins over. That's all I'm going to say about it. We're going to move forward. Well, and, and listen, the phone lines are open. So, you know, like I said, I, I, I will listen, you know, I, I will keep it from getting confrontational, but I will listen, but we're still going to talk about a lot of good things going on in the city a little bit.